Good morning. Welcome to Early Morning Prayer, brought to you by Calvary Episcopal Church. And I'm Mary Horton. Please let me know you're here by saying something in the chat so I may greet you. This is Friday in the 13th week after Pentecost. And we do uh, commemorate David Pendleton Okerhater. Okerhater today. I'll share just a little bit about that. He was a deacon who lived in the 1930s or in the early 1900s. Good morning, Thomas. And Joanna, glad to see you both jumping on this morning. Start here in just a minute. <clears throat> Go ahead and talk a little bit about David Oker Hader. Uh, David Pendleton Oker Hader, he was a deacon. God's warrior is an epithet by which David Pender. Pendleton Okerhater is known among the Cheyenne Indians of Oklahoma. The title is an acronym for this Apostle of Christ to the Cheyenne was originally a soldier who fought against the United States government with warriors of other tribes in the disputes over Indian land rights. He was born around 1851. By the late 1860s, he had distinguished himself for bravery and leadership as an officer in an elite corps of Cheyenne fighters. Let's see. In 1875, after a year of minor uprisings and threats, he and 27 other warrior leaders were taken prisoner by the U.S. Army, charged with inciting rebellion, and sent to a disused military prison in Florida. Under the influence of a concerned army captain who sought to educate the prisoners, Okerhader and his companions learned English, gave art and archery lessons to the area's many visitors, and they had their first encounter with the Christian faith. The captain's example and that of other concerned Christians from as far away as New York had a profound effect on the young warrior. He was moved to answer the call to transform his leadership in war into a lifelong ministry of peace. Uh, he went north to study for the ministry, and at his baptism in Syracuse in 1878, he took the name David Pendleton Okerhater in honor of his benefactor benefactress. He was ordinated to the diaconate in 1881 and returned to Oklahoma. He founded and operated schools and missions um, in Oklahoma and continued his ministry of service, education, and pastoral care among his people until his death in August 1931. David Pendleton Okerhader. Let's see, I've missed se greeting several. Um, good morning, Annie and Rick. Uh, Linda Gale, Raymond, and Gale. Hope everyone is feeling well this morning, this Friday morning. So welcome to Early Morning Prayer. We will start as it is time. Um, brought to you by Calvary Episcopal Church. And I'm Mary Fortin. <clears throat> The hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for such the Father seeks to worship him. From Psalm 51, Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Good morning, Sandy. 
the Old Testament reading this morning is 1 Kings chapter 5 verse 1 through 1 1 through 6 and then 1 and 7 excuse me 5 1 through 6 1 and 7 a reading from the first book of the Kings. King Hiram of Tyre sent his servants to Solomon when he heard that they had anointed him king in place of his father. For Hiram has always been a friend to David. Solomon sent word to Hiram saying, You know that my father David could not build a house for the name of the Lord his God because of the warfare with which his enemies surrounded him until the Lord put them under the soles of his feet. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side. There is neither adversary nor misfortune. So I intend to build a house for the name of the Lord my God. As the Lord said to my father David, Your son, whom I will set on your throne in your place, shall build the house for my name. Therefore command that cedars from the Lebanon be cut for me. My servants will join your servants, and I will give you whatever wages you set for your servants. For you know that there is no one among us who knows how to cut timber like the Sidonians. When Hiram heard the words of Solomon, he greatly rejoiced and said, Blessed be the Lord today, who has given to David a wise son to be over this great people. Hiram sent word to Solomon, I have heard the message that you have sent to me. I will fulfill all your needs in the matter of cedar and cypress timber. My servants shall bring it down to the sea from the Lebanon. I will make it into rafts to go by sea to the place you indicate. I will have them broken up there for you to take away. And you shall meet my needs by providing food for my household. So Hiram supplied Solomon's every need for timber of cedar and cypress. Solomon, in turn, gave Hiram 20,000 cores of wheat as food for his household and 20 cores of fine oil. Solomon gave this to Hiram year by year. So the Lord gave Solomon wisdom, as he promised him. There was peace between Hiram and Solomon, and the two of them made a treaty. King Solomon conscripted forced labor out of all Israel. The levy numbered 30,000 men. He sent them to the Lebanon, 10,000 a month in shifts. They would be a month in the Lebanon and two months at home. Adoram Ed Adoram was in charge of the forced labor. Solomon also had 70,000 laborers and 80,000 stonecutters in the hill country, besides Solomon's 3,300 3, supervisors who were over the work having charge of the people who did the work. At the king's command, they quarried out great, costly stones in order to lay the foundation of the house with dressed stones. So Solomon's builders and Hiram's builders and the Giblites did the stone cutting and prepared the timber and the stone to build the house. In the 480th year after the Israelites came out of the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month of Zib, which is the second month, he began to build the house of the Lord. The house was built with stone, finished at the quarry, so not, that neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron was heard in the temple while it was being built. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Welcome, Kendra, to the back row. <laughs> The psalm for today is Psalm 16 and 17. Uh, psalm 16 starts on page 599. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer. 
nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Continuing with Psalm 17. Hear my plea of innocence, O Lord. Give heed to my cry. Listen to my prayer, which does not come from lying lips. Let my vindication come forth from your presence. Let your eyes be fixed on justice. Weigh my heart, summon me by night. Melt me down, you will find no impurity in me. I give no offense with my mouth as others do. I have heeded the words of your lips. My footsteps hold fast to the ways of your law. In your paths my feet shall not stumble. I will call upon you, O God, for you will not answer me. Excuse me. I will call upon you, God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and hear my words. Show me your marvelous loving kindness. O Savior of those who take refuge at your right hand from those who rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. From the wicked who assault me, from my deadly enemies who surround me. They have closed their heart to pity, and their mouth speaks proud things. They press me hard, now they surround me, watching how they may cast me to the ground. Like a lion greedy for its prey, and like a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, confront them and bring them down. Deliver me from the wicked by your sword. Deliver me, O Lord, by your hand from those whose portion in life is this world, whose bellies you fill with your treasure, who are well supplied with children and leave their wealth to the little ones. But at my vindication I shall see your face. When I awake I shall be satisfied beholding your likeness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> the second reading is Acts 28, verses 1 through 16. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After we had reached safety, we then learned that the island was called Malta. The natives showed us unusual kindness. Since it had begun to rain and was cold, they kindled a fire and welcomed all of us around it. Paul had gathered a bundle of brushwood and was putting it on the fire, when a viper, driven out by the heat, fastened itself on his hand. When the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, this man must be a murderer. Though he has escaped from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. He, however, shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. They were expecting him to swell up or drop dead, but after, that they, had, but after they had waited a long time and saw that nothing unusual had happened to him, they changed their minds and began to say that he was a god. Now in the neighborhood of that place were lands belonging to the leading man of the island, named Publius, who received us and entertained us hospitably for three days. It so happened that the father of Publius lay sick in bed with fever and dysentery. Paul visited him and cured him by praying and putting his hands on him. After this happened, the rest of the people on the island who had diseases also came and were cured. They bestowed many honors on us, and when we were about to sail, they put on board all the provisions we needed. 
Three months later, we set sail on a ship that had wintered at the island, an Alexandrian ship with the twin brothers as its figurehead. We put in at Syracuse and stayed there for three days. Then we weighed anchor and came to Rhegium. After a day, there was a south wind sprang up, and on the second day, we came to Puteoli. There we found believers and were invited to stay with them for seven days. And so we came to Rome. The believers from there, when they heard of us, came as far as the Forum of Appius and three taverns to greet us. On seeing them, Paul thanked God and took courage. When we came into Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with the soldier who was guarding him. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From St. Augustine's prayer book, In God's presence, think through the day ahead, the work you will do, and the people you will encounter, the dangers or uncertainties you face, the possibilities for joy and acts of kindness, any particular resolutions you need to renew, Consider what might draw you from the love of God and neighbor, the opportunities you will have to know and serve God and to grow in virtue. Remember those closest to you and all for whom you have agreed to pray. And now I invite your prayers, whether in the chat or in the silence of your own heart. Let us pray. I pray for Gary and Pam, for Doris, for Ricky, for Megan and Chris, Cindy and family, for Kristen and Dave. Prayers for the repose of the soul of Cheryl L. Taylor. Uh, gratitude for the start of seasonal change. Prayers for Lynn, Jennifer, Richard, Maxine, Jamie, Tom, and Fred. Prayers for Stuart, for Laura, Cameron, and Michael. Praying for Carol, Ward, Jenny, Bob, Jimmy, and Elizabeth. Praying for all working in education, Doug, Noah, David and Sue, Chris and Angela, Kevin, Andrea, Annie, Jennifer, Gail, John Henry, Alvina, Emily, and Mandy. Friends, I'm hoping I didn't miss someone's prayers. They are scrolling by fairly quickly this morning. So if I missed yours, feel free to put it in the chat again. Prayers for Laura, for Sarah, for Christy, for Allison. Cheryl, Jennifer, and Lisa. Prayers for Ben and Carrie Ann, especially today with their move. Prayers for the family and friends and all who loved Eliza Fletcher. Thanksgiving for Calvary and for its people and its ministers and leaders and for our morning prayer community. Also prayers for Paul and Ruthie as we get ready to welcome them back into our fold from their sabbatical. Ask God's blessings, guidance, and strength in all that lies before you. Gather up these thoughts and reflections with the words our Savior taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Collect of the Day O God of unsearchable wisdom and mercy, liberate us from bondage to self and empower us to serve you and our neighbors, that like your David, your servant David Ogerhater, we might bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, through Jesus Christ, the captain of our salvation, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Colic for Fridays. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. In the closing collect. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a safe and peaceful and productive day, whatever that might look like for you. Um, there will be clergy-led morning prayer at 8 o'clock, actually. I believe that's Raymond this morning. And um, remember where our Sunday activities at our, our beloved Calvary uh, Basement Church at 630, uh, Eucharist at 8, uh, the community breakfast, Education at 9.15 and then 10.30 will be our uh, Eucharist service. And of course 6 p.m. is the uh, uh, additional service that's offered on Sunday evenings. So thank you all for joining and uh, look forward to seeing you again at early morning prayer when we return next week. Peace be with you. Have a particularly safe Labor Day weekend.